One of the reactor developer companies that invest, Amazon did invest in is X Energy, and the company's CEO, Clay Sell, is joining us now. Clay, it's great to speak with you here. I want to start on this funding round uh, that Amazon was part of, really anchoring it at $500 million. What is the plan to use that money, and how will it impact your expansion? Yeah, it was really important to have Amazon lead this round, so it's going to produce $500 million cash. And what we're going to do is primarily use that to do two things, complete the design of our standard plant, and then construct the first fuel facility that will manufacture the fuel that is used in our first and subsequent plants. This first design that we are completing and licensing now will be constructed uh, in a collaboration with Dow Chemical in the state of Texas. And then that very same design will be used in subsequent plants with Amazon and others. Uh, Clay, you know, we've established this as an emerging technology, and SMRs have long been an attractive ambition here because of how nimble they're likely to be, how quickly they can scale, the cheaper costs. But the reality is we don't have one that's operational in the U.S. yet. Why do you think it's taken so long to get one off the ground? Well, the nature of mega projects, it just takes time to get them designed and to the marketplace. The bigger reason is we have not seen sufficient demand from actual customers that are prepared to build these plants. And the big news from last week was not just Amazon saying, if someone else builds it, we will come buy the power. Amazon said, we are prepared to invest hundreds of millions of dollars in the construction of these plants. That's the game changer. And that's what's really going to facilitate this new build era. So now you've got that demand picture in place, at least from some of these big tech companies. As you think about the larger future here, you know, how much of that demand, specifically around SMRs, is expected to come from tech companies because of what they're building out with AI? Well, a significant portion of the increased electricity demand in the United States for the next 25 years is going to come from, from AI. It could be as, as high as 10, 20%. And, and so we anticipate a very significant portion of our demand to come from electricity uh, for AI. But we also produce uh, a very high temperature quality steam, uh, which will be used by, chemical, by companies like Dow Chemical and other petrochemical and industrial manufacturers to help decarbonize their operations. The interesting thing about X Energy, we had, have a wide array of functionality, which makes us attractive to both electricity consumers and STEAM users. Clay, Akigo had mentioned the funding from the DOE. How concerned are you about the potential that that funding could dry up depending on who enters the White House come November? I think nuclear power is one of the most widely bipartisan issues uh, in Washington, D.C. Let me give you an example. Last week at the Amazon announcement of their investment in us and Energy Northwest, Glenn Youngkin, the Republican governor of Virginia, was on the stage with Jennifer Granholm and two Democratic senators uh, from the state of Virginia. It has deep bipartisan support. I think we are uniquely in a good position, no matter who wins the election, to continue to have strong support and funding support and policy support going forward. And Clay, you were the Secretary of Energy under the Bush administration. I just want to get your thoughts on the energy sector and the impact of fiscal on that sector moving forward. There was this huge debate about whether energy would be under pressure under the Biden administration. It's actually uh, continued to hit new highs. What would you tell investors about how this upcoming election could impact the energy trade, regardless of who wins? Well, I think, uh, you know, for the last four years, you know, we've hit record highs in traditional energy production here in the United States. I mean, oil and gas production is at an all-time high in the United States, which is a little different, a little contrary to the narrative that's typically around the Biden administration. I think either way, no matter who wins, we're going to continue to see strong fundamentals in traditional energy and increasing, increasingly strong fundamentals in clean 24-7 nuclear power. Uh, finally, Clay, you know, uh, the the argument against nuclear power for many years has been not just the cost, but the waste that comes from it. Now you're starting to see this turn towards nuclear energy again, largely because the actual energy that's generated um, is virtually 
clean, right? When you talk about emissions actually emitted, but uh, help me understand how SMRs are different than traditional nuclear reactors in terms of waste that comes from it, because that seems to be still a big concern, at least for those who are watching this space, to say, how clean is this really? We, we still produce nuclear waste. We produce less of it per megawatt day of power that is produced, but we still produce nuclear waste. But let me put that into context. For 70 years, we've had nuclear power in the United States. All of the nuclear waste that's been generated could be stored in a building the size of a super Walmart. And we know where every molecule of that waste is. We know that it is contained. We know, to know that it is safe from the public and from the environment and will be for generations to come. That's an extraordinarily great waste story. Compare that to fossil fuels, compare that to the coal industry, even compare that to the end of life you know, what are you going to do with solar panels once they end their life? The, the waste story for nuclear power is one of the most compelling aspects, one of the most attractive things that we have. All right, Clay, we got to leave it there, but really appreciate you making the time for us. And thanks to our own Akiko Fujita for bringing us the conversation. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me.